the six bows in the body, starting with my basic proper alignment, feet or shoulder width, basic stacking, feeling comfortable, spine lift, head suspend from the back of the head, belly soft, air under the arms, heavy in the elbows, extending the fingers, soft knees to round the groin, hollow the chest. Now that we have our basic alignment, we can look at the concept of the bow. So we talked already about looking at Tai Chi as moving circularly. We also talk about our alignment as setting up the bows in the body. And what does that mean? Well, we're trying to return to when we were three years old. The three-year-old stands in such a way that's agile, comfortable. You notice if, if you bump into a child, they have agility in every direction. Why? because they naturally have the bows in their body, in their alignment. So the concept of a bow is what in physics? What makes a bow strong, an archway, or, those, or in a suspension bridge? Why is a bow so strong? If I look at a straight line versus a bow, and I apply a pressure to a straight line, just where I'm pushing, is what is going to be holding up that weight. Just where I'm pushing. The concept of, of a bow or an archway, why it's so strong, is that if I have a bow and I'm applying a pressure, that weight is now distributed throughout the entire bow. So if I'm standing in my body with straight lines and somebody pushes into me, my center is immediately affected. But if I'm able to stand in such a way where I have the bows in my body, it's like I'm a ball. It's called naturally protecting your center. Imagine this for a moment. I'm holding one of those big exercise balls. And I'm gonna run into this wall here. What's going to happen? I'm gonna bounce off. Did the ball exert anything to do that? I did. The ball bounced me back. It naturally protected its center without exerting anything. Now if I had a box and I walked into the wall, what would happen? Kathunk, I wouldn't bounce back at all. So the same concept applies. When we have curvature, when you look at what a ball can do, we, we understand that it naturally protects its center. So I can do the same thing with my body. Instead of being in straight lines where my center is going to be affected, I can start to learn to naturally protect the center just by how I'm standing. How to set up the bows in the body? First, my basic alignment, the feet or shoulder width, allowing that stacking, shoulders, hips, knees, feet, comfortable. First bow in the body is the spine. How to get it there? We say spine lift, head suspend, belly soft. So what does that mean? As I'm inhaling, I'm allowing the space between the vertebra from the tailbone up to gently open, extending. It's like growing an inch. Noticing the spine is in the back of the head, so I'm extending through the spine. I'm allowing it, using my energy. It's like the back of the head is lifting. Being careful, this is not head suspend. You can see, I'm, I'm compressing the neck, so it's the back of the head that's suspending, as if I could tie off to the ceiling, keeping this alignment. But noticing I've used tension to get here. So, Tai Chi says we want to be soft. How do I soften? Relax and let go of the lower belly, inviting all the muscles to release. So again, suspend the head by inhaling, allowing the vertebra from the tailbone up to expand that space in between them, through the neck to the back of the head, softening the belly. Everything relaxed, maintaining the structure. First and most important bone, and it is the first principle in our Tai Chi study. Suspend the head. The next bows are in the arms. We talk about the concept of having air under the armpit. But it's mostly in your mind. It's only as thick as my t-shirt. But it's the idea that I now have roundness under the arm. But I don't want to feel like this, so I soften the elbow. Relax it, let the fingers extend. 
And now I imagine I've connected a bow from fingertip to fingertip through the back. So I have that bow in my arms. Next bows are in the legs. We call softening the knee to round the groin. What does that mean? Softening means the knee is not locked, the knee is not bent. Locking we never want to do because it's damaging the joint. Bending, nothing's being damaged, but I'm exerting more energy than I need to just to stand upright. So I'm training myself, it's called soften the knee to allow this feeling of the bow through the legs. Now I've connected the legs to one another. So the concept is that, remember the concept of the bow? If somebody pushes into my hip and I have a bow, all of a sudden the energy is gonna move through the bow down into the ground. So if somebody's pushing into me, all of a sudden my structure maintains itself. If I have no bows and somebody pushes into me, it affects my center immediately. So I'm learning how to softly maintain this roundness in my structure. Last bow is in the chest. It's as if somebody were pushing into me. If somebody pushes into me, it does not take much at all to take me to my balance point. The idea of hollowing the chest means this energy in my chest, I'm just going to let it soften and settle down to the ground. You have this slight curving that happens. But you'll notice that when I do this, not much is changing in my structure. Settling down. It's very internal. So again, to review, the six bows in the body. Starting with my basic proper alignment, feet or shoulder width. Basic stacking, feeling comfortable. Spine lift. Head suspend from the back of the head. Belly soft. Air under the arms. Heavy in the elbows, extending the fingers. Soft knees to round the groin. Hollow the chest. Those are the six bows in the body. And from here, I can feel that I have that feeling of the ball in every direction. Our Taiji study is studying the bows. Our Taiji study is studying how to maintain this comfortable, agile, non-exertive positioning as I'm moving. So anything you do, even in your daily life, you start to look at this, the bows in the body. 